on wisdom. Real people are those whose natures are united with the Tao. Therefore, they exist yet seem not to. They are full yet seem empty. They abide in oneness and don't know anything else. They govern themselves inwardly and do not take note of externals. Perfectly clear, utterly plain, and without contrivance, they return to simplicity. Comprehending the fundamental and embracing the spirit, they thus roam on the edge of heaven and earth. Wandering in the vastness beyond mundane clutter, they work freely without making an issue of it. Real people know without learning, see without looking, achieve without striving, and understand without trying. They sense and respond, act when necessary, and go where there is no choice, like the shining of light, like the emanation of rays. Sages respond to being by non-being, unfailingly finding out the inner pattern. They receive fullness by emptiness, unfailingly finding out the measure. They live out their lives with calm joy and empty tranquility. Therefore, they are not too distant from anything and not too close to anything. The mind is the ruler of the body while the spirit is the treasure of the mind. When the body is worked without rest, it collapses. When the spirit is used without cease, it becomes exhausted. Sages value and respect them and do not dare to be excessive. What sages learn is to return their nature to the beginning and let the mind travel freely in openness. What developed people learn is to link their nature to vast emptiness and become aware of the silent infinite. The learning of ordinary worldlings is otherwise. They grasp at virtues and constrict their nature, inwardly worrying about their physical organs while outwardly belaboring their eyes and ears. Sages send the spirit to the capital of awareness and return to the beginning of myriad things. They look at the formless and listen to the soundless. In the midst of profound darkness, they alone see light. In the midst of silent vastness, they alone have illumination. Those whose words are inconstant and whose acts are inconsistent are small people. Those who observe one thing and understand one art are mediocre people. Those with a comprehensive purview and an inclusive grasp of things, who assess abilities and employ them judiciously, are sages. With the art of the way, it is not possible to seek fame through promotion, but it is possible to develop oneself by retirement. It is not possible to gain advantages by it, but it is possible to avoid injuries. Therefore, Sages do not seek fame by their acts and do not seek praise for their wisdom. They emulate nature itself, so the ego is not involved. Sages are not ashamed of having low social status, but they are ashamed of not putting the way into practice. They do not worry about their own lives being short, but they do worry about the distress of the common people. Sages are not worried or defensive, they do not welcome what comes or send off what goes. People may be of the east, west, south, or north, but sages stand alone at the center. Therefore, they can be in the midst of a warped society without losing their straightness. The whole world is influenced by external forces, while sages alone do not leave their sacred ground. Therefore, they do not strive to be liked and do not flee disdain, following the way of heaven. They do not initiate and are not self-centered according to the principle of heaven. They do not plan ahead, yet do not abandon opportunity, making a pact with heaven. They do not seek gain, yet do not reject fortune, following the example of heaven. Sages are inwardly concealed and do not act as initiators for others. When things come up, they manage them 
And when people come to them, they respond. 